Waiter! Bring me a bucket! Excellent! Unexpected, wasn't it? So what's D-Lab got on the bench today? A Dynakit PAS preamplifier. I actually sent one of my power supply boards to this fellow to install. He started emailing me and said he was having a lot of problems getting the module in. And after quite a few exchanges, he said, hey, I'm just going to send it to you, straighten the thing out, and get it back to me. So here we are, guys. But this PAS has a unique problem. And I thought you guys would enjoy this. So a little history. I used to work at the Eaton Corporation, and I worked on old machines that were built in the 70s. And when I started, I opened up these control panels, and every wire was red, and none of them were identified. It was just a big, giant bowl of red spaghetti. Guess what we got here? All right, top side, you can see the module's in place. It's on a standoff. It really doesn't look too bad. But see these red wires underneath of it? Well, they go under the chassis. And guess what? Oh yeah! We got some red spaghetti. But at least these were identified. But you can see the whole project really turned into a disaster for the guy. What I plan on doing is cutting all this out, get things cleaned up, wire up that module, and test it. So what's the best way to approach something like this? Yep, take my red cutters and cut out the red spaghetti. There's no reason to trace anything. Best thing to do is get it all out and start over. So I got everything stripped out. You can see our red spaghetti on the bottom of that board. The filament wires on the transformer have been spliced. I need to remove that and extend these wires because they actually need to go to the new control board. So there's a board in place. Getting ready to drop her on the mount, hook up the ground. Bottom side, she's all cleaned up. Everything's hooked up the way it should be. Well, here's the underside view of the board before I mount it. So you see these blue wires. Two of them are extended wires from the filament winding of the power transformer. And they land here in the middle. The other twisted pair of smaller blues goes to the filament of the 12X4 tube. These two wires, the orange and purple, are the DC feeds that go to the 12AX7 filaments. Then you have this red wire, that's the high voltage coming up from the 12X4. Further down you see a orange and another yellow. Those are the high voltage feeds that go to the PC5 and 6 boards. And we have the ground runner. Okay, top side of the board. I'm going to explain the wiring that comes in to this area. I can't show you the actual wires coming up from underneath, but I can explain the function. So here you see the 120 volt input. This is the hot lead that goes direct to the line cord. From there, there is a high current branch that comes up to one of the normally open contacts on the switched AC output relay, okay? Then you have a low current AC that comes through this fuse and it's going to the front panel switch. So these two pads go to the front panel slide switch. When you turn that switch on, it applies power to the primary of the power transformer and it turns on this relay which enables the switched outlets on the back of the preamp. This little lead here is your neutral. So it only needs to be like a 22 gauge wire because that simply feeds the other side of this relay coil. All right, bottom side, this is my AC line coming in. These two outlets are in parallel. This is the AC feed that goes up to the power supply board. Here's my neutral, all right? This is the switched outlets, and they are also in parallel. This line comes off of the relay top side, 
which flips these guys on and off when you turn on the preamp. The main filter cap has all the terminals cut off, but I leave that in place for cosmetics, plus it has the ground points that we don't want to interrupt. This lead here is the high voltage off the 12X4 that goes up to the power supply board. And here are those filament leads I showed you earlier. The orange and purple that come in are the DC power feeds for the filaments of the 12AX7s. So you can land them here and then use this original twisted pair which feeds the other board. Another thing that I do to all these preamps if they're not present is to install these one microfarad caps. Normally there was a wire from the bottom of the base pod that went to these pads, okay? Later on, Dynaco removed that wire and installed a one microfarad cap to keep DC off of those pots. All right, the preamp is powered up. I'm monitoring the output channel on my scope. There's one channel. And there's the other. So it appears to be alive. Let's hook it up to an amp, see what it sounds like. Okay, it's test time of the PAS preamp. I've got it hooked to the D-Lab ST7 amplifier. No signal applied. Time control is a little grubby, but what I noticed is this bass control has a lot of rumble, and I've already cleaned these controls. A little bit on that one too. But this pot, that's not good. But at this point, I just want to play it, make sure that we have good sound and the controls somewhat work. Okay, I'm running a CD player. Let's see what she sounds like. Still got some issues, I believe it's that pot. Okay, we're not out of the woods yet on this Dyna PAS. The 12AX7s are extremely microphonic. It's got the black BB caps and I'm seeing DC leakage. Three of the tone controls measure open. If I play with them, I'll see my own meter kind of flicker try to give me a measurement and then they just go open. Common problem with these preamps. So I need to contact the owner and get permission to move any further. So I hope you enjoyed the PAS adventure. D-Lab signing off for now.